Okay, today we are doing my plant updates slash highlights for the month of April. We are almost mid-April now, which is so crazy. Um, so there's a lot, there's a lot going on right now, both in my personal life and in my plant collection. I feel like I have a lot of projects that are on the go and we're starting to see a lot of growth. It's just, it's a time. Things are happening. I'm so excited to do the walkthrough and point some things out to y'all. I'm gonna start with the hanging plant on my bed frame behind me. I do have my laundry hanging on here, so just ignore that. Okay, there's never really anything too, too crazy going on with the trailing plants that I have on my bed frame. Like my Cebu Blue is always just doing well, starting to get more new growth ever since I've added this extra grow light onto here. I've had such good luck with these grow lights from Amazon and they're just convenient to kind of clip wherever I need them to be. So they're loving that. My Hoya Bolognana is actually croaking though and I'm not too sure why. I need to up pot this and not up pot this, unpot this and take a look at the roots because, oh wait, there's new growth there. Maybe only some of it is dying. I just keep getting these weird markings on the leaves and then the leaves will just fall off and I swear you guys every couple of days I'm having to pick up leaves off the floor because they're just falling off and this is such or was such a big lush healthy plant and now it just kind of looks terrible which is really sad but I'm gonna take some insurance cuttings I'm gonna check it out this afternoon after I'm done filming and see what's up so this big plant may be no more I I don't know it just went so downhill after it fell off the shelf and I repotted it We'll have to see what's going on, but um, yeah. Anyways, beside it, my trailing jade, my goodness, let me get some of these lights out of the way. My trailing jade, absolutely one of my favorite plants right now. I just like, oh, I just can't get over her. Like, are you kidding me? It's growing so long and it's also just like so lush and full. There's so many different vines growing out. Oh my goodness, it's just such a beautiful plant. It looks so healthy, it looks so good, and it's just, it's very low maintenance. I can't believe that this plant almost croaked like a year ago. It's really bounced back and I'm just so happy that it did. Hoya Matilde just looking stunning as usual. I do need to pot the Matilde cuttings here back into that very soon. Oh my goodness, it has little baby leaves, how cute. Yeah, those need to be potted up soon because they actually did end up rooting, which is really nice. Okay, and then on the other side here, we have my Hoya Crimson Queen, which is absolutely going crazy as well. There's so much new growth all over this plant. Like, honestly, everywhere there's new baby leaves. I can't believe, um, like, how big this plant already is and the fact that it's still growing so much. I'm like, oh my goodness, like, how? And I've never repotted this. Like, it's literally in the old crusty Dusty mix that it came in and in the original pot and everything, so... I don't know. It's just, it's still so happy. It will lose these white leaves though. Um, it does put out quite a few of all white leaves and those will eventually drop, but it does hang on to them for quite some time, which is really nice. Anyways, yeah, this plant just, it continually amazes me. And then next to that, we have my big pot of Anthurium vitrifolium settling in still. I moved this over here. I potted all of these cuttings up. It's, it hasn't really done anything yet. I think it's just kind of you know, getting acclimated to its new pot and its new air, like, spot and everything. Couple more Hoya on here, the Shepardii and the Linearis. They're looking amazing as usual. And then I moved my fern leaf cactus onto the bed frame because I repotted it into a larger pot. It was just, oh my goodness, it was drying out so much. I had it in like a small terracotta pot, just a four inch, and it really needed to be upgraded. So I did that and then I had no spot for it. So I had to put it there. So yeah, it's just kind of adjusting to its new spot as well. And then right here we have my Monstera Albo top cut and this is the new leaf. It's still hardening off actually. It's like facing up towards the that light right there. But yeah, it looks really pretty. I love it so much. And then down here along the windowsill, I actually got a new leaf on my Dark Lord. Oh, right here. Oh my goodness, it's actually... Like, this is actually quite a decent sized leaf. This is definitely the biggest leaf I've ever gotten on this Dark Lord. So I'm very impressed with that. I'm probably going to end up chopping this up. This is my mix pot and I don't know. I just, the Dark Lord is growing so much faster than the Silver Sword. So I might have to redo this and kind of, 
make them a little bit more even. I want them to be like have the same I want them to have the same size leaves and I want them to be like around that size. Maybe I'll wait until I can grow the silver sword out a bit and then pot them back together again. Anyways, I was really excited to see that Dark Lord leaf come in. And then what else? My Polynera has started growing for me again, which is really nice. And baby leaves right there, little cutie pie. Oh, and my variegated Thanksgiving cactus. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I recently potted my three. So this was one, and then this was a rooted cutting, and this was also a rooted cutting. I recently decided to go ahead and pot them all together into this terracotta pot. This is just into a cactus and succulent mix. And they finally, they like took a while. They were kind of floppy for a while, but I think that they've finally all settled in because they're much more firm now. And this one is growing like crazy. We have, this is new growth. That's obviously new growth coming in there. And then we have another like offshoot of new growth coming out from there. And the variegation looks stunning on that one. It looks like it's gonna be half moon. Um, and then we have this new growth. This is an entirely white one. Like, look at that. How pretty. This one has entirely white also. This one's like mostly white. Um, some of the variegation on this plant is just so, so good. And then we have new growth coming out over on these ones. Like, oh my goodness, look, there's like three coming out on that one. Oh, I'm just so impressed with this plant. This is a wishlist plant that definitely did not disappoint. Like, I'm so excited every time I see this growing. It makes me so, so happy. So yeah, it's really enjoying its new setup. And I just can't wait to see this fill in more. Once this is a bigger plant, it's going to be, it's going to be so incredible. I've been really excited about my jungle cactus lately. In general, my Ripsalis are starting to wake up. So this is my Ripsalis paradoxa. And we have some new growth happening at the bottom here. You can tell it comes in a little bit thinner. Well, it comes in very small and then it gets thicker and thicker. But this one is still a little bit more thin and it's like that bright lime green. So you can tell that that's a new little like link. <laughs> they remind me of like little chain links. Um, I don't know what that's actually called, vine, but it's new growth. We'll call it that, new growth. Um, yeah, so it's very exciting. And then up here, we also have one, two, three new little vines coming in there. I love this plant so much. I just think that it has such a cool look and I can't wait to have a more full one. So it's really exciting to see new growth come in on this one. This was new too, actually. It's like still a little bit soft, I can kind of tell. This whole piece, this was new. And it's just kind of hardening off like the rest of the plant. Yeah, this is an old one. You can tell they're kind of like more hard and stiff the old ones. I got this as just a cutting and I've grown this whole plant from it. So, so definitely a plant that's really easy to just start from a small piece if you're able to get a cutting from someone in your area or a plant friend or something. Highly, highly recommend. Oh, I'm realizing that I forgot about my plants down here. So I recently kind of did some rearranging in here and I've moved a bunch of plants to the foot of my bed because they used to be... Did I just drop that on the floor? <laughs> what the heck? Um, they used to be over here, which was obviously like very much in my way because it was just in the middle of the room. So, and I had a light here. So I moved the light. This is just one of my Soltec aspect lights. I moved it to over here. It's literally just like slung over my bed. Um, and I just have these plants hanging out here. They're just kind of plants that I just don't really, they need high lights, but I don't really have a great spot for them right now. And as you can see, one of them is my Monstera Aurea. And look at this leaf. Like, are you kidding me? Oh my goodness, it's coming in so beautifully. Look how variegated that is. Oh, it's so stunning. This plant was in my beautiful hand-painted pot by Firefly in the Room, Svetlana. And I took it out because I just wouldn't see it down here. So I switched it to a different plant. It's over there. I'll show it to you when we get over there. But yeah, so that's why it's just in its plain black pot right now. Because I really wanted to be able to enjoy the pot. And just, this is a temporary setup. But um, obviously I wouldn't see it down here. So I took it out of there. Um, and then this is how the other leaf has hardened off. I don't know what this, like sap on here is about it's weird i need to wash these leaves i'm still so mad that this got damaged i dropped this plant when it was on my shelf so that's what the damage marks are from but the variegation is stunning this seems thirsty too i think i need to oh no maybe it's not anyways this plant needs a lot of light for the variegation to look good so that's why it's hanging out down here 
And then another plant that needs a lot of light is my ficus audrey, which is right here, as you can see. I've been trying to get this thing grow to grow for months now, and there's no new growth happening. <laughs> not, not even a hint of new growth. So if any light can make this grow, it's going to be my Soltec light, but um, I'm still waiting. It's a ficus, so I'm not too surprised, but I'm checking it all the time to see if new leaves are coming in, and nothing yet. Also looks like I need to do another, I think this is just dusty, but I do need to clean the leaves again because these are prone to spider mites. Over here I just have some of my, what are these called? Monstera, oh my goodness, these look awful. My cuttings, oh they're thirsty. Oh my, oh my gosh, one is broken. <gasps> this is chaos down here, guys. Oh my gosh, okay. I need to sort these out. I have like four pots of these, so I'm not too worried, but still, what the heck. Okay, the other ones don't look as bad. What are these called again? I know I love them. What are you? Subpanata. Subpanata. That's what they're called. Yeah. I find that I can tend to neglect cuttings when I have like multiples of them. Like this one, I have four pots of it, so I'm just kind of like not as on top of it as if I just have one of a cutting or of a plant then I'm like you know a lot more attentive but these I've obviously just neglected a little but I am gonna water in my bedroom uh today after I'm done filming for the day so if you see some thirsty plants in here you know that's why it's watering day okay back to over here we have my sorry if I'm being so thorough in this video I feel like I'm doing a full-on plant tour but I just, you know, it's spring. There's a lot happening. I think that my bear paw is putting out some new growth. You can see like the little paws coming in there. This is still probably my favorite succulent. It's so hard to choose. It probably is my favorite succulent though. And I saw the other day on the Crystal Star Nursery restock that they have an inner variegated version. So a different version of the variegated bear paw. And I really want that one too. So maybe that will be a plant that I end up getting sometime later in the season. Oh, also you can see my little container garden out there. I literally haven't done anything for it this year. Like I have not watered, I have not, they've just been sitting out there all winter. And my strawberries have come up. My kale is coming up. It looks a little spindly, but it's coming up. Um, my chives are coming up. Do you see them back there? Okay, it's just focusing on my dirty window, but those are chives. <laughs> And I do, in the fire planter, have some seeds that are sprouting, and I have no idea what they are. Maybe I'll insert a photo of them, but yeah, I have no idea what they are. <laughs> and they're coming up. Anyways, okay, moving along. Compacta. Oh my gosh, was it trying to bloom? Oh, maybe that's an old one. Um, Compacta has actually been growing a lot recently. This is like a fully new vine within the past couple months, this one. And then behind, we also have a couple more new vines. So yeah, it's just crazy. This plant is just, yeah, wow. It's getting really big. Okay, and then over here to my shelf with my Soltec light, I do have some, some exciting updates. I actually have some very exciting things happening in my prop box, but that's, oh, is it open? That's a whole other video that is in progress. So keep your eyes peeled for that video coming out. It actually probably won't be out for a while, but things are happening in there, which I'm very excited about. We also have an alocasia corm that has sprouted. I actually just noticed this this morning and this is a new alocasia to my collection. So I'm gonna inspect this a little bit more later on today when I do my watering as well, because how exciting. I need to get a better look at it. I have more propagations that are kind of hanging out up here as well. This is my Syngonium erythrophyllum. And would you guys believe this is all I have left for Syngonium erythrophyllum in my collection right now? I had a full plant and just out of nowhere, it completely died on me. I think that it got underwatered and then the roots dried up and it got dry rot because the whole plant just wilted and started dying. And I was like, okay, I need to try to take a couple of propagations to save, but these are so notoriously difficult to root. I've tried rooting, like I've cut up a whole plant of this before and haven't come out with that many cuttings, even from a whole plant. So I was like, okay, I need to at least try. So I took a few cuttings and I really didn't have high hopes because the plant was already dehydrated, but we actually have some roots happening, you guys. Look at that. That big root right there is on one of the Syngonium leaves, and it looks like there's roots starting on the other cuttings too, so I can't believe my luck. Like, I'm so happy. I would have been really bummed to lose this plant. I love anything with dark foliage, so yeah, I love that one so much. I'm excited to pot this up when they're like fully rooted again. 
Okay, one of my more exciting updates is right here, my Euphorbia White Ghost. Let me grab it down. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw that this was happening because, you guys, I've had this plant for probably a couple of years now, and it had not grown for me at all. Even spending summers in south-facing windows, the whole nine yards, it just would not grow for me. Oh, it actually, something happened with this plant at one point. Does anybody remember? I remember making a video about it. I think it rotted and I had to chop it in half and this was the top cut that I ended up rerooting and repotting up. So it's been a journey basically with this plant. Anyways, it was doing nothing again for so long after I potted it up and I decided to move it under my Soltec light because again, I was like, you know, I need to blast this thing with light, try to get some new growth. And this is all new. And oh my goodness, when I first started seeing it grow, first of all, Euphorbia and a lot of cactus in general are really cute when they put new growth out. Like at first it just kind of looks like these little kind of like hair or like, I don't even know what these are, like little leaf things um, pointing out of the top. And then it like slowly turns into full new growth. This new arm and everything, like how, oh my gosh, it's just so cute. And it's like so it looks so smooth and bright and it has like a sheen to it. Like it just, it looks fresh, like straight out of the womb. Um, I am so, so excited about it. Oh my goodness. Oh, the little like pink, there's like little pink. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but these like um, spikes are pink, like sun stressing a little bit. And some of the little leaves have like little green flecks on them. I've just been appreciating this so much. And I'm just, I'm so, so thankful that it's growing for me because like, what a cool plant. Not something that I should be able to grow here in the Pacific Northwest, but here we are. It do be growing with the help of my, my lights here. Okay, I'm gonna put him back under there. Beside that, I ended up putting my, uh, what is this, high pink lipstick plant? Oh my goodness, it's gonna like fall over because it's so... Um, this plant is getting so big and it's still just in a small pot and it's so lightweight right now so I don't want to like tug on it and it's gonna fall but this is my Thai pink lipstick plant such a beautiful plant I love the way that the leaves grow like the kind of um, I don't know what to call it the kind of like pattern that the leaves come in like they just look like they're organized really nicely and I don't know I love it so much and the blooms on these are so pretty I will oh my gosh wait these aren't blooms are they no, okay, they're just new leaves. I got alarmed for a minute. I thought maybe it was, wait. No, it's just the new leaves. They just come in in like a cool pattern. Never mind, we don't have blooms yet, but you know, I feel like it's gonna bloom for me one day and y'all will be the first to hear about it and see it because that's just gonna be so pretty. Also, this is one of my fastest growing plants. I got this as just a small plant in the fall and now it's like a huge, full, luscious plant. Speaking of blooms, I did end up moving my orchid onto this shelf and how pretty is that little pop of color? Like, wow, I love it so much. And also I was talking about the Crystal Star nursery restock, which I did end up getting a really cool plant. Can't wait to show you. But um, they have a ton of orchids, Crystal Star nursery. And I was looking through them and I really wanted to get an orchid, but I was just like so, I just don't know anything about them so I didn't know which one to choose and I just got overwhelmed so I didn't end up getting any but um, I would still like to get another orchid because so far this one is surviving you guys um, and I'm very happy about that. I do need to repot this because it's still just in the tiny pot that it came in but this just makes me so happy looking and seeing these blooms. I think that it complements like my my tropical plant collection like it, it complements all the aeroids so nicely and um, and yeah, I just love having it in my collection. So I've definitely got my eye out for more orchids. I just, I don't know which ones I should get. Also beside that, this is one of my other current obsessions. This is my strepto, streptocarpus, um, or strep for short. And it's just like a very fuzzy leafed, like textured leaf plant. And I think there's something going on down here. And I, oh, it's hard to see because it's shadowed. But um, do you see those little, that little um, curled guy down there. I think that those, there's two of them. There's one. Oh, it's going to be so hard to show you. You'll see them once they get bigger, but um, there's a couple things happening down there that I think might be blooms. And when this blooms for me, you guys, like, let me tell you, I will be so excited. You know, I love my blooms. It honestly makes me emotional when my plants bloom. I just, yeah, I get very excited and I already love this plant for its foliage, but just the fact that it puts out blooms just like really levels it up for me. 
This plant was new to me when I got it a couple of months ago and so far it's been really easy going but I have found that it is thirsty and it will completely droop. Like these leaves will go so soft and wilty and you'll know that it needs to be watered so ideally you know you'd water it before it gets to that point but it will tell you when it's thirsty. Oh yeah Crimson Princess is also just doing the most right now as well. The new leaves are so pretty when they come in they're such a bright pink. Gorgeous. And then as you can see this one has been trying to get your attention the whole time I've been filming. This is my Alocasia Michalitziana, which has finally decided to wake up for spring, which I'm so grateful for. I am also filming a whole other video on this plant because I'm just trying to uh, revive it. Oh, I don't know what the word is. Give it a makeover? I don't know. You can see it has so many droopy leaves that just like, well, some of them are yellowing, which is good because then I can cut them off soon because I don't like them. But it had so many leaves that were drooping. This plant just, it had a really tough past honestly almost year like it really went through a rough patch and I'm just kind of trying to bring it back so I'm experimenting with this kind of like almost air layering situation here um which you'll see in the video whenever whenever it comes out this alocasia basically has a really long like uh almost like barky stem happening and I really want to root that so that I can cut and then I can repot so that there's not like such a long weird stem on this alocasia it's kind of like I'll kind of like be able to restart it like I can remove the lower leaves and then just start with the the top leaves that are actually like facing up and everything. So as for leaves that have come out in the past month or so, this one, which is the oldest, you can tell it's the darkest of the new leaves. This one came out shortly after and then just within like the past week these two have come out. They're very fresh still. Not the biggest leaves but they are very beautiful. They look healthy. They're not drooping so I'm really happy with this and I'm hoping that I can kind of you know transform this plant a little bit. Oh there's even a new one trying to come out right there. Hoya multiflora just kind of hanging out here. It puts out a lot of peduncles but it hasn't actually bloomed. Well I guess not a lot. There's only two peduncles but it hasn't actually bloomed for me yet so I'll be so happy when it does because these are some of my favorite Hoya blooms but so far we just have these beautiful large leaves. What else is going on down here? Um, I moved my Hoya carii over to there and it's actually giving me a couple of new leaves. Oh it's like intertwined with my obovata. Let me try to move. Okay so these two leaves this one and this one are new they're still you know expanding and everything but i'll be really curious to see what those look like once they come in also move my dubia plank back over to here as well hasn't done anything yet i i so regret not air layering when i had my dubia all the way up this plank oh that was silly of me but oh well my Florida ghost is just, it's just out of control. I'm actually going to be making a whole video cutting this plant up soon too. I think I'm going to give it its own dedicated video because, you know, that's quite the project and this is one of my favorite plants. So that's the newest leaf that it's put out and it's already working on another one there. It started putting out more minty leaves for me, which I'm happy about because for a while it was only giving me these super, super white leaves, which is kind of scary. And then I've also moved my Philodendron Majestic over to here. This is honestly like, oh my goodness, looking at this plant makes me so happy. Like how stunning is this? Seriously, I love the Majestic so much. It is getting light from my Plant Spectrum 32 light, which sits in front of it. I just moved it for filming. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so happy, you guys. And I extended the Thickly Pole as well, and it's super sturdy. It's just, yeah, I'm so happy with this setup. Right now I have two vines in here, but I do want to add a third. Um, and we have new leaves happening on each of the vines right now, which is just, oh, it's so exciting. It makes me so happy to see this plant every day. So that's the first leaf coming in. And then the second one is up here. Look at that. I need to pin this better to the pole. Maybe once it comes in a little bit more. But yeah, just, oh my goodness, such a special plant. I love it so much. Oh, I do have a new leaf on my tie as well. Let's pull him out. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, it's grown since the last time I saw it. It has grown. <gasps> it's massive. It got so big. Oh, wow, it's so pretty. I'm kind of surprised that there's no fenestrations, honestly, um, because the leaf is, you know, it's quite big, but I love the variegation on it. I love these like sectoral kind of creamy patches. I'm just, yeah, can't complain. I'm so happy with that. This was the last one that came in that um, when the plant got knocked over, this 
uh, ripped when it was just emerging, which is so annoying. But honestly, I'm pretty happy that I'm able to keep the leaf on. Like, I thought the whole leaf was just going to fall off and I was going to lose the whole thing. But I was able to, you know, save the leaf. It is a little crazy looking, but it's still working to bring energy into the plant. So I'm just going to leave it on for now, at least. And yeah, no more new leaves coming in right now. But this plant definitely does seem to have picked up the pace with its growth rate. Like, it's looking pretty full now. Look at that. Look at him. And how pretty. Like, how good is he looking? Oh my goodness. Thirsty, though, which is a dangerous game. I'm definitely going to have to water, like I said. I'm just gonna... Actually, I'll sneak him back in there. So basically outgrew the shelf as well. It used to be up there where the Michalitziana is, but I've moved it onto the floor and it's getting some light from the plant spectrum right there. Honestly, it's probably not enough light for it, but for now, I think it'll be fine. Maybe I'll kind of move these over a bit. Like I think I'll move the Majestic over a little bit and then I can kind of slide the tie into, into the front there closer to the light. And then as you can see, we have my philodendron, I guess it's called El Guapo now, which means handsome in Spanish. And I approve, very fitting. This is such a handsome, beautiful plant. I love him so much. Um, I just repotted him. Well, actually this was a couple of weeks ago, but I think the video would have just went up recently. So he's in this gorgeous butterfly ceramic planter now. I love it so much. Um, moved him down to here because just with the new planter and everything, it was just... It was too overwhelming for this spot, and honestly, this isn't a very sturdy shelf either, so I moved him down here, and this is a, I would honestly consider this a low, a fairly low light philodendron, like medium to low. It doesn't like any direct light or anything, the leaves will bleach, so um, I think that this spot is fine for it. Recently cut up my whole mother Monstera Albo. The, those cuttings are just propagating water, as you can see, so that's what's going on here. I did end up selling my third one. I said I was waffling for a long time on because I had my mid cut, I had my top cut, which is over there, and then I had my mother plant. I decided to sell the mid cut, so I just sold that last week, and I've completely chopped up the mother because, well, for one, it was reverting, and for two, yeah, it just it was just time to chop it up. Now I can start over, now I can have a super lush plant, and now I can see what type of variegation I get on all of these cuttings. I think it's going to be really fun. And I was really pleasantly surprised with the variegation that I got on both of my cuttings. So now I have so many more to play with. And one of these are also for an upcoming trade as well. Oh, also, um, I sold, oh my goodness, did you guys even notice? My big philodendron Camposportuanum is gone. I sold the mother plant. I did keep three cuttings because I really want to start this plant over again. And I want to specifically have three vines growing in a pot. So I am rooting philodendron Camposportuanum in there. And it already had huge aerial roots, as you can see. So I don't think I'm going to have any problems there. This is also my other majestic cutting that I have rooting that I'm probably going to end up potting into there. Also need to chop up my whole, I have a whole majestic mother plant that needs to be chopped as well. This is where I ended up moving my olive pot to my philodendron varicosum, which is so thirsty right now. And I actually didn't notice it was this thirsty. And I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried. These are my only varicosum cuttings. And oh my goodness, I'll be so mad if I kill them because I didn't keep anything else for insurance. <sighs> I think it'll be fine. I think it'll bounce back when I water it. But yeah, I will be doing that immediately. Also, this this looks thirsty too. My Syndaxis exotica. Oh yeah, she dry, she dry. Ficus shivriana, oh my goodness, this is so thirsty too. Oh man, I'm so bad. Um, I was away for the weekend, so. And then last night I watered my Mills Bow Tall, which honestly probably didn't need it as bad as this room needed it. I probably should have done this room first, but oh well. My Ficus shivriana is looking amazing. That's the newest leaf there. I'm just so in awe of this plant. Like the variegation is so stunning and that leaf came in a little weird, if y'all remember, but. This is the next one and it looks so good. And then this is the one that's coming in right now and it also looks so good. I'm just so excited for this to get bigger, like to turn into a little bit more mature of a ficus because I see photos of other people's and I'm just, oh my goodness, yeah, they're just, wow. They're just stunning. Hoya quinquinervia is giving me this beautiful new leaf. Look at that color. Oh, it is so pretty. I love that Hoya. Also moved my dragon scale into here. It just wasn't getting enough light um, in the spot that it was in. It was kind of like under my mother forest, uh, like grow stand pole thing, vertical grow thing. 
Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was under there, and it was just so blocked by other plants. It had some other really big plants around it, like the Billy and the Painted Lady, and it just wasn't getting enough light, so I've moved it to this spot here. It does get some sun in the afternoon when I have my blinds closed right now. I'm going to open them up in a second. Um, but it does get some sun in the afternoon, which is really nice, and it gets just some ambient light from the grow lights above here. But yeah, I think that that is most- oh wait, there's one more. My asparagus fern. I have been so impressed with this plant, you guys. Like, I'm obsessed. Every single day I'm admiring it. It's put out so much new growth, and it's so cool to watch. If you've never had one of these, like, I didn't know how cool the new growth came in. So they just come in as, like, these just, like- straight little uh, what would these be called like they almost look it almost looks like it's putting out a runner um like this one is a bit younger they almost look like they're just like one little vine when they come in and then they slowly push out all of the little fronds this one has come in a little bit more but it's still pretty fresh it's still like expanding and getting fluffier you can see it pushes out the fronds and then eventually you end up with something like this so yeah, it's just been so cool to watch. It's very happy under its own little personal grow light here. I can tell that you know, at the rate of how quickly this is growing, this setup is not going to last super long for this plant because, you know, this is a, really a relatively small light, so this plant will need something a little bit better soon. But for now, it works, and yeah, it just makes me so happy. I love it so much. Okay, I actually had to take a break from filming because it was getting really loud right outside of my window. So we're back a couple hours later. It is rainbow hour now, so even better. Um, I've closed my blinds a little bit because as you can see, it's quite sunny out now, which is lovely. But I guess I'll start over here with my philodendron gloriosum. Um, so this is the newest leaf on this plant. It's all hardened off now and it looks just beautiful. Uh, but I am air layering this plant right now. And, you know, I'm not sure if there's any... I would imagine there's roots in here because it's been going for a little while now, like at least a few weeks. But I've got to kind of investigate further and check that out. Um, anyways, there is a nice growth point here. Look how juicy that's looking. So my plan is to... I'm probably going to chop the plant here, actually, because I really like all the leaves from this point onward. So that will include this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf when I chop. And I think that that's just going to make a beautiful new plant. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. Honestly, I could probably chop this soon. I just need to check out this air layering situation. And then moving to over here, I know along the windowsill I've been seeing some really good growth, probably because it is sunny now, this window is south facing, so the plants have just been really happy. My manjula, particularly, I've been noticing quite a few new leaves coming in on. Look at this last one, has so much white on it, and then there's one that's kind of unfurling right now as well. This is a plant that I will say is really impressing me. Um, it's one that I wasn't sure if I would ever like before owning, but I will say that I do like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. It's extremely beautiful. And just like the variation of coloring and how different each leaf is, it's just, yeah, it's so gorgeous. I would love to have this in a spot where I got to admire it a little bit more. It's kind of hidden, you know, behind everything here. But every time I take it out to water it, I'm always looking it over and just admiring all the leaves so much. Okay, but what I wanted to show you back here is actually my Opuntia. Let me grab it out. Okay, here it is. Now, the reason I'm so excited about this plant is because of that new growth that's happening up there. Look at how cute that is. Oh my goodness. Oh, I just love the way new growth, how I was talking about with my Euphorbia, um, saying just how cute new growth is on like Euphorbia and cactus. This is definitely what I mean. Like, how adorable is that? I love how pink it is. It started as just like a tiny pink little blip at the top. I actually thought it might have been a bloom coming in, but no, it was definitely new growth, a new little, what are these called, pad? A new pad. I was gonna say panel, but I don't think that's right. Anyways, I love this variegated Opuntia. This is actually one of the first plants that I ever ordered from Crystal Star Nursery, and it came to me quite small, and now it's a pretty decent size. I really downsized a lot of cactus throughout the years of me moving and everything, but this is one that I've always kept, and I'm really glad that I did. This week I'm actually filming my yearly cactus and succulent repot, because a lot of these plants, like, 
you know, a lot of my succulents especially are just super, they just really need an upgrade. I can just tell because they're drying out a lot and um, about once a year I like to repot them. So I'm going to be filming that video this week and I'm excited to get this into a cuter pot because it's just in this plastic nursery pot and it deserves so much better. I'm, I'm back full swing into watering and fertilizing all of my cactus and succulents as well so I'm sure I'll see more new exciting growth coming up here. And then as for the plants on top of the cabinet, there's not really anything too crazy going on. My philodendron narrow has another new leaf that's coming in. I swear every update video I do, there's a new leaf coming in on this plant because it just grows so fast. And I also noticed this, like is that another growth point? Is it going to put out a leaf from there as well? That's like in the middle of the plant. Uh, that would be pretty cool if it did. I find that this happens a lot with my plants that are on these closed back poles because they get such an established root system at every node. So I'm really excited to see what happens with that. I do have my Monstera obliqua here. I chopped this plant up and I chopped up all the runners which is coming in its own separate video. But this one has a new growth point which is so exciting. This was I think a mid cut and I didn't know if it was going to make it so I'm glad that it's doing well and growing. I have a couple of alocasia here. This one looks so weird, my cupria. It looks like it's like, I don't know, windblown or something. It's like flat against the petiole. I don't know what's going on there. But hasn't really grown for me in a long time. There is something happening down here, so I'm looking forward to when that turns into something. Um, nothing else really too much to report. My begonia maculata, which I repotted recently, is doing really well. It has another baby leaf coming in. Oh, I just love the way that these leaves look when they're coming in. My variegated string of hearts is also growing like a weed. I need to propagate this soon to make it more full. I think I honestly said that in my last update video too. So I should add that to my list because I just don't think about it um, until I'm like coming through here and noticing how long it is. Okay, over here on my forest vertical garden, I don't really think that there- Oh, there is one exciting update for sure. Um, I also moved my Marble Queen Pothos here. But what, oh, and look at this leaf on the Rio. It's so pink, how gorgeous. Um, it looks a little like spider mighty or something though. So I don't know what's going on there. Sometimes they just look like that. <laughs> but um, what's exciting is this new leaf right here. This is my allocation Jacqueline. And it had only given me one new leaf in the past, which was this one right after I got it. And it hasn't grown since. And now we are getting another new leaf coming in and look at that. Oh my goodness, it's going to be so fun to watch come in just because of the shape. I cannot wait to see how big that's going to be. Other than that, everybody's pretty happy on here. Look at all of those new little growth, baby growths coming in, my rat tail cactus. Also my Ripsalis paradoxa minor is growing down here as well. You can see the skinny new growth coming in on the vine. So cute. I also rooted and potted up this little uh, part that I broke off. Also have a new leaf on my philodendron painted lady and it came in so nicely. The painted lady has really sorted herself out. Um, she was really not doing well for a while but now she's back to herself putting out these gorgeous beautiful big leaves. Billy has put out a new leaf for me. This one is a little bit smaller than the last one. The last one is right there, but honestly I'm fine with it. And I actually probably prefer this leaf because it has a so, so much shorter of a petiole. Like it's just so much more compact. Look at how long the other petiole is. It's like way too long, it's just crazy. So this one's just definitely a little bit more compact. I think I'm gonna air layer this once it gets to the top of the pole, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I'm still thinking about it, we'll see. And then down here, this is actually really exciting. This is my philodendron El Choco Red. And as you can see, it's working on a new leaf here. This actually just fully like emerged. It's not unfurled, but it's fully emerged. And that just happened today because when I checked on it this morning, it was still in the sheath. So we're making progress here. And oh, oh, sorry, I can't help myself sometimes. But yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, the color is just like... It looks electric. Oh my goodness. This plant is so stunning. I cannot wait to see what that's going to look like. This was the last leaf. So obviously, oh my God, is it getting like, why is it yellow? Why is it getting yellow? Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm paranoid when it comes to this plant now because 
when the yellowing was happening the first time, it was because of root rot. I don't think that this one has root rot though. Maybe it's from the light, I don't know. I've never had one of these plant spectrum lights burn any of my plants though, ever. And I have some of them like so close to these lights. So I'd be surprised. Maybe it was over fertilizing. <gasps> I don't know. Ah, that annoys me. <laughs> All I want is like a nice, perfect El Choco, but it seems to be so hard for me to get that. Anyways, obviously I love the plant even in its imperfections. It's just, yeah. Moving along, we have my Begonia Thurstonii, which I've been showing a lot lately. This is the newest leaf. Beautiful. Another little baby one coming in back there. Um, Philodendron Splendid. I showed the newest leaf of this recently as well. That's what it looks like. It's huge. I think it might be getting a little bit too much light too. It's like a pretty light green compared to the other one. So maybe I need to like back these up a little bit. I finally had a new leaf emerge on my variegated Bromarx philodendron right here. It has a million growth points, as you can see, but it just, it's been taking so long to establish after I took it out of the greenhouse cabinet, which is fine. But yeah, that's the first leaf to come out, and I honestly don't even know, oh, it's not focusing. I honestly don't even know if it's variegated or not. It kind of looks like it's just green, but I'm not going to be able to tell until it's unfurled, so... I'm looking forward to finding out what that's going to look like. But yeah, ooh, that growth point definitely looks variegated. It's been a strange plant. I really want to size this up, though. Somebody on my Patreon slash Discord recently got one of these, and the leaves are massive, and it's so gorgeous, and I was just like, oh my goodness, okay, I really need to put some work into this plant, try to get the leaves to size up, because yeah, wow, it's just breathtaking when they get big. I always just breeze past this, my coffin, little um, terrarium, and I get people asking for updates on it, and I just always, I just don't think to update on it, but I will give you an update today. So this has three, I think three main plants in it, and they are Begonia amphioxus, which there's a bunch right there, and there's also Begonia amphioxus up here. It's interesting because the coloring on this looks a little different, like it's like less um, green than the begonia amphioxus in my cabinet here. It's like, I don't know, the leaves are big though. They're both getting the same light, so I'm not really sure why that is, but, um, oh, maybe it's a fertilizer thing, because I haven't been great about fertilizing this. Anyways, there's a lot of amphioxus in here, and this guy climbing on the back there is my ficus, oh gosh, what was this called again? It's completely escaping me. This is a ficus though, and it's so cool and hairy. And I bought it specifically, I don't know if you'll be able to see very well, but I bought it specifically for this terrarium. Um, it's bothering me that I can't remember the name right now. Anyways, it's doing really well in here. It's actually almost to the top of the terrarium, so I'm gonna have to propagate it soon. Um, so that's really great. And then I have another shingler in here, which it's like a McGilvery something something. I'm not really sure. It starts down here, and then it goes all the way up the side here. So yeah, that guy is doing real- oh wow, look how cool it looks from the other side. Wow. Yeah, that's super cool. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at all the roots in here. I wish I could see the back more. Oh, there was a bloom on my Begonia Amphioxus too. Oh, that's crazy. Anyways, I'm probably, honestly, what am I going to do with this? Maybe I'm going to take it apart because all, you know, these plants need to be either cut back or something. But I might just take them all out. The only thing is I don't really have anywhere to put that ficus. Oh, Velosa. It's ficus Velosa. I don't really have anywhere to put that ficus Velosa because it's more of like a terrarium plant. And I'm scared to take it out of there. But yeah, we'll see. Also, there's all these books here because I'm filming a video for my vlog channel on all of my plant books. So if you're interested in that, it'll be on my vlog channel. Philodendron Tordum is putting out a new leaf as well. Plant wall, looking amazing, phenomenal, beautiful, gorgeous. I literally love all these plants so freaking much. 
And then we'll pop into my Millsbo wide cabinet here and just go over the, the pertinent things. Um, Philodendron Charonier, I'm still kind of waiting for a nice new leaf to come in. I've had some like really small ones, but yeah, I don't know. I'm still kind of keeping an eye on it. The cutting, however, gave me a nice leaf that I'm waiting for it to unfurl right there. This is a Charonier cutting. All of my Anthurium Forgetii cuttings actually, like chonks, actually grew leaves, which I'm really surprised about. I honestly didn't think any of them were going to. So now I have so many Forgetii babies. There's one right here. There's one right here. This is my favorite one. It's so dark and pretty. And then this one just came out. I need to take the lid off because it's like growing into the side of it. But yeah, I was so surprised because I'd never really propagated an Anthurium like that before. I literally just cut the plant up and stuck the chunks into perlite. As you can see. <laughs> but yeah, I had really great success with doing them with like the dome lid like that. This Nepenthes Fusca was drying out so quickly, so I just decided to put it in a plastic cup to kind of, um, like I set the pot into the plastic cup to kind of um, retain some of the humidity so, it wouldn't, so I wouldn't have to be watering it like every second day, and it seems to be working. So I'm really happy with that. This isn't looking like amazing amazing i mean it looks okay there is new growth happening but the other one is just like growing so much better for me i don't know if i would say better i think it's been my fault because it kept drying out so much my epi marble i decided to put it in this cabinet i just put it in here um yesterday i think so it really hasn't been in here for long but yeah it's just gorgeous obviously working on some new leaves one of these i think this one might be new actually it gave me one new leaf and then this is another new leaf also put my Syndapsis tattoo into here. This is what the new leaf ended up looking like. It's so gorgeous. Oh, I was posting about this on my Instagram story a couple of days ago or last week or something. This is my Discoria Discolor that Charmaine sent me and I thought I killed it. It was completely shriveled up. Like these leaves were completely floppy. I thought there was no way they were going to perk up again. I put it in a Ziploc and had it in there for a couple of weeks. That's a really great way to rehab plants is to pop them in a Ziploc. I've honestly, that honestly very rarely fails me. Like it's just, it works so well. So I did that and I noticed the leaves started perking up and I was so surprised. I was like, wow. And then I just checked on it last week and it had shot out new growth. So as you can see, if the camera will focus, <laughs> there we go. Uh, we have some new little leaves. Come on. Don't be ridiculous. Okay, so there's a new little baby leaf. Like, what the heck? And then there's more there? Are you kidding me? Oh, it's just so cool. So I'm so happy that this plant lives on because honestly, you guys, I thought I was going to lose it. I really thought it had permanently croaked on me, but it did not. You can see some of the roots right there. I need to get this on a trellis. ASAP. Yeah, my other um, Nepenthes that I was talking about. This is the Glandulifera. Newest leaf on my Bromarks Fantasy. Honestly thought it was going to come in a little bit nicer, but I won't judge it until it's like fully hardened off. Hopefully it'll be bigger than this one though. I find this plant is a little bit tricky to size up. Begonia Sinbad doing amazing since I repotted it. Seems super happy, except for this. What's going on here? Okay, there's a dead leaf, but other than that, it looks super happy and there's lots of new growth and everything. This is the newest leaf on my Crystal Meg, and yeah, I'm very impressed with this. It's not often I get like perfect Anthurium leaves, so I've been admiring this like crazy. It's just gorgeous. Also been admiring my Hoya Wilbur Graves, like, oh my goodness, this Hoya, it looks fake. Like, it's so pretty. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. What else do we have in here? My, oh, I ended up putting my Medium Medium in here to kind of um, get established in its uh, new pot and everything. We recently did that in a video where I was potting all of my propagations. New Ring of Fire leaf looks like it's going to be really nicely variegated, or at least have some variegation. And what else? I think that's pretty much the main things. My Epi No ID is doing really well in its new setup down there too. Oh, this new leaf on my Monstera Sildebicana is like behind the wire. How in the heck did you even get in there? Okay, I'm gonna have to free that later, but yeah, I guess it's kind of like trellising itself there. It actually looks like it's gonna be a decent sized leaf too. 
Okay, and then we're heading over to the Mills Botol, which I have been so obsessed with this cabinet lately. I'm just, I'm so happy with all the upgrades that I made. Um, the plants are absolutely loving it in there. Everybody just is doing so well. Even my string of hearts that trails along the side here has been shooting out so much new growth. And I think it's because it's getting light from the plant spectrum lights in there. Like it's just so happy, it's crazy. It wasn't really growing before. And now it's just, um, I mean, it needs to be trimmed. Look at all this dry stuff. But all the new growth <laughs> is looking so good. Also decided to move my string of needles or Serapegia linearis over to on top of the cabinet as well. And it seems to be really happy on there. It's kind of fun because then I can see it a little bit more. It's getting like super, super bushy and long too. But inside the cabinet, let me turn the fans off. These ones are really loud. Okay, inside the cabinet, these plants are just doing the most in here and I can't stop admiring them, um, especially this one in particular, my philodendron gigas. I honestly like, it's shocking to me how perfect this leaf is, how beautiful it is, the sheen on it, like everything about it is absolute perfection. The way that it ended up hardening off, it's just like, wow, I'm obsessed with it. And as you can see, it's already working on another one. So how exciting is that? Anyways, let's start at the top. I did also post a photo dump on Instagram of some updates from this cabinet. So if you've seen that, then you've probably seen all some of these updates already. Um, but I'll just go through the main things that we have going on. So first of all, my begonia gray feather, which I did this whole chop and prop and repot thing with it, trying to get nice leaves to come in again, because as you can see, it was like looking kind of janky. And I'm getting a lot of new growth and the leaves look so good so far. So I'm just, I'm really happy with that and really excited to see them get bigger to see what they're going to look like. Also, my Jacenia pothos, which I uh, rooted and then rotted, is finally rerooting. It's in perlite and it actually has a little growth point as well. So I'm really excited for that to root a little bit more so that I can pot it up. Recently potted up some of my silver sword cuttings because I really want a big silver sword again. So we're starting from the bottom here, tiny little cuttings. Hopefully this will be a big, beautiful plant one day. Um, all of my Hoya are doing really well in here, honestly. Serpens is looking absolutely beautiful. This is one of my favorites lately. Peperomia prostrata has been growing as well. The leaves are just, oh my goodness, they're so cute on this. I'm getting some new leaves down here as well. My Aglionema manila's pride, which I completely rotted. Um, I thought the whole thing, I thought I was going to lose the whole plant because the leaves are getting really curly and it just, it wasn't looking happy at all. Had to cut off all the roots. I had it in water for a long time, like probably over a month and it wasn't doing anything. So I ended up moving it into perlite and then decided to put it in the cabinet just to kind of give it a boost because I just really didn't want to lose this plant. And you guys, I'm so happy to report that we have a new growth point right there. And there's actually another growth point down here. I don't know if you can see that right there. So I'm just, I'm so excited about that. I cannot wait to see what the new growth is going to look like on this plant because the one I got, it's not like a super highly variegated specimen, um, but this was the newest leaf and it does have a pretty decent chunk of white. So I do have hope for this plant and yeah, I'm just so curious to know what the new leaves are going to look like. I mean, even the non-variegated ones are gorgeous. This is just like a regular aglionema commutatum um but yeah i mean honestly just a stunning plant i love the colors calathea warshawixii has been moved into the cabinet she's been living in here for honestly less than a couple of weeks and she's already shot out a new leaf and it's probably going to be the biggest leaf this plant has ever given me so it's safe to say she's absolutely loving cabinet life although i don't know what's going on here this happened before um i moved her into the cabinet so I don't know. That was previous damage and I don't really know what caused it. Kind of unfortunate because the leaves were looking pretty good on her and then this happened. Calathea struggles, my friends. We already went over the gigas. Um, my anthurium are all doing pretty well. Also, I have a new leaf coming in on one of my hybrids back there, one of my dark mama hybrids. This one right here. So yeah, this plant's probably gonna have to come out of here soon because there's barely even room for this leaf. So once that one grows, you know, not really gonna be much space. Oh, also, how could I forget? My freaking philodendron El Choco Red. When I tell you I was shocked when I saw this leaf, like I, I was so shocked you guys because these are the last leaves. Like take a look, you know, <laughs> this one, this one, just kind of like crappy little leaves that would never come in nice. I moved it back into the cabinet and bam, 
like phenomenal, big, beautiful leaf. Um, I always am so tempted to peel them. I know. Don't yell at me. Just, I just do a little like test to see if it wants to come and it does. So I'm just going to do that. <laughs> I know I can't help myself. Um, anyways, yeah, just the color, everything is just, mm, it's perfection on this. Oh, I love it so much. I find that El Chocos just look like so phenomenal when they're cabinet grown or like greenhouse grown or whatever. Like this looks so much better than my big one is looking right now. Okay, moving down to the lower level. So I've moved in some of my new plants from Plant Haven Toronto. As you can see, we have my Begonia Autumn Ember up here. It's actually sitting on top of my Subhastatum, which it has a Rousseau um, plant care grow pole. Uh, the pot fits, oh my gosh, I'm getting stuck in my Escalado. The pot fits perfectly in here and I didn't have any space to put it. So I just snuck the pot in there and it's just like, it just works perfectly. I'm so happy about that. Yes. <laughs> She's, um, wants her dinner. Yeah, is mommy always filming at dinner time? Huh? Okay, she's crunching back there. But um, as I was saying, I moved some of my plants from Plant Haven Toronto in here. So we have this begonia here. And then we also have some of the Hoya from them. This one was from an older order, actually. This is one from the more recent order. Literally obsessed with this one. Also, my Begonia Draco Pelta has been rehabbing in this little bubble situation and it's doing so well. Like, oh my goodness, it just looks so much better than it was looking. I honestly thought I was gonna lose this plant, but now it's bouncing back, which is great to see. I struggle with this one just because it wants really high humidity and I don't really have like a terrarium setup. So I just kind of do like makeshift things. I mean, it might be okay in the cabinet now that the humidity is maintaining a little bit higher. So maybe I'll try to transition it out of there into the cabinet, we'll see. This is what my Crystal Meg Luxurians uh, new leaf ended up looking like. It's actually so pretty. I'm kind of disappointed that it got um, banged up because it's just such a beautiful leaf like the color on it it has like that kind of like oil spill like purple sheen to it i don't know how much the camera will pick up but yeah just the details on this plant are so so gorgeous so hopefully the next leaf will come in undamaged and we'll be able to kind of appreciate it in all of its glory also have a new leaf coming in on the philodendron mame which i can't wait to see i recently sprayed some of the plants in here with my sacred elements sacred leaf tonic um, to kind of prevent any spider mite outbreaks. I try to do that with this one. Honestly, like every second watering just to try to keep on top of it now. Seems to be working well. So yeah, really excited to see what that leaf is gonna look like. This was the last one and it's just like so pretty. Um, Moved my Mama Black Velvet in here mostly because I want to keep it for corms and I just haven't had a chance to kind of go through it and harvest the corms yet. Monstera Escaletto is doing really well. Um, there is the new, oh my goodness, the new um, growth point steadily coming in still. I'm like looking at it every day, checking on it because I'm so excited. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what that's gonna look like. Oh, I think it was down here. This was just damage that happened in shipping, by the way. It's not like burn from the light or anything. It was, it was like that already. Just a little bit of damage, it's no big deal. And yeah, my variegated Maranta doing really well. Oh, my Hoya chicken farm is growing a new vine. This is actually it right here. You can't really see. This cabinet is kind of... <laughs> I just arranged it and it had it all nice and then it got crazy again. And now I need to rearrange again. So it's just a constant, you know, having plants I find I'm just constantly rearranging. Um, so yeah, my Hoya chicken farm is back there. You just can't really see it all right now, but this is a new vine. So I'm really hoping for some new leaves. One of my favorite Hoya to get new leaves on because they're just so big and beautiful. Anyways, that's what's going on down there. Also, I forgot to mention for my Calathea, I'm kind of doing the same thing that I was explaining on my, uh, Alocasia Michalitziana, where this has like a bit of a stem again, or like a, almost like a trunk, like a, like a, just like a bare kind of like woodier, trunk situation going on just because I've had this plant for a while and it just keeps like growing upwards. So I'm doing an experiment to see if I can get any roots into this like air layering situation. I have no idea if Calathea will do that or not, but I'm hoping it will so that I can like chop and then repot, you know, because it's just getting like too tall and weird. If anybody's done that before, let me know. 
Anyways, I think that that's it for in here. We just have my kitchen windowsill plants over here and it is getting a little bit dark outside. So you can't really see much, but I did put my Peperomia Parallel on a little DIY trellis and I think that it looks so cute. I've just been admiring this whenever I've been like at the sink washing dishes and things. I'm so happy with how it's looking. Also, my Hoya Wayadii has completely woken up. There's new leaves coming in everywhere, which is always fun to see. It goes through this cycle every winter. Every winter, it kind of goes dormant, and then in the spring, it wakes up and it starts growing again. And yeah, it just makes me so happy. Cute little leaves. And then my ZZ Raven is still doing absolutely nothing, but I look forward to the day when I get a new stock coming out. I will honestly be shocked. I'll be shocked when this thing starts growing. I've had this since 2019, I think, and it's just one stock. Anyways, I think that that's it. I'm just gonna open my blinds up again. But yeah, I think that that's it for all of the updates. It's probably a long one. There's just been, yeah, there's just a lot of things going on, a lot of new growth and, you know, exciting things happening. And I love talking about my plants and sharing them with you. What, do you want to say bye as well? Do you? Okay. Oh, she wants me to play with her um, her watering can toy. Okay, just one sec. All right, I'm gonna head out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much. And, oh, sorry, <laughs> did I scare you? And I will see you in the next one. Bye.